Another day, another shitty pasta. Here we go. This one's called Ashley the Shadow. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect out of it either. My name is Ashley Marshall. I'm only 15, and I live with my mom and dad in a large house by the woods. I love hanging out with my friends and spending time in my room writing and reading. <laughs> Sorry. I'm 5'3", and have mid, black, long, curly brown hair with hazel eyes. I lived in Oregon when I had to run with the lullaby. With the lullaby. So, we know that our threat is, a, is the lullaby, or a lullaby. We know she lived in Oregon. And we just know exactly how she looks. It was a midsummer, and it was hot outside. <laughs> oh! Hot in summertime, I guess. The sun was beating down on... <laughs> the sun was beating down on my back as I lay in the front yard. There was never much to do around here. Until one of my friends called me claiming that last night there was a freaky lullaby being played at our house. So what can you do now? You can't do anything still, right? Because you said that you couldn't do anything until your friend called you about a lullaby. That... That doesn't... That doesn't change your whole routine plans Sally it's nothing big probably someone playing their flute dot 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 oh oh there's a guy he's got outside your window and he's just playing a flute <laughs> that, br that brings creepiness to a whole new light maybe this is just a pioneer for the horror genre a new genre of flute people after I after that, I hung up and went back to tanning. My little sister came out asking to come play with her. She's my sister. Can I really <laughs> tell her no? I was going to be moving soon, so I had to make the best of it. I spent the rest of the evening playing dress-up and dolls with her. And at her bedtime, I tucked her in and walked out of her room. Yeah, yeah you did. Mom sat in the front room watching TV, and my dad was asleep in the chair. Mom was watching Unsolved Mysteries. There was one that seemed to be on every time I walked out. The mystery of the lullaby. <laughs> it's <laughs> said that the person will hear a lullaby being played to them, and on the third night they will be killed. Shrugging my shoulders, I walked to the kitchen and grabbed a soda. And I walked to my room and used my laptop until exactly four in the morning, and then I went to sleep. Wow. It's all just ringing in like a bell, right? You were on the laptop until exactly four in the morning. Damn good timing, I guess. I woke up in the morning and walked down. That's a sentence. Sally's mom was in the living room crying. I ran up to her worried, and she looked at me with tears in her eyes. She said she'd be hearing the lullaby for two nights, and suddenly she's dead. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Sally's mother broke down sobbing. Again, the mystery of the lullaby wasn't a joke. I ran out of the house and down the street barefoot, feeling like someone was watching me. What caused you to do this? Like, what drove you to, like, run outside barefoot? What was happening that made you not even consider shoes or sandals? I looked over my shoulder. There was nothing there. I began to get the creeps. I made my way to Sally's house and ran up to her room in tears. Her body was gone and blood was everywhere. There was something written on the wall, but it was smeared and there was something under it. You should have listened to her, Ashley. Dun dun! That's... It's her fault somehow, so she's gonna be guilt-tripped or something. I don't know, but what I do know is that... I'm pretty sure, don't, don't quote me on this, I'm not... I'm not a crimeologist, but if it was a scene where someone was dead, I don't think anybody could just walk in. I think it would be like cut off or something like that. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's just what TV shows have taught me. I gasped and covered my mouth in tears that rolled down my cheeks. Okay. How did I know I didn't believe her? Oh, how, sorry. How did it know I didn't believe her? More scared than anything now, I ran home unable to shake the feeling of eyes burning into my back. I burst through the front door and fell to my knees sobbing. My god, 
picture this. Picture picture that in your head. Go back and just replay that line. Doesn't that seem like the hammiest acting ever? Sally's mom and my mom ran over to me, making sure I was okay. And by the way, I corrected it. It's my instead of me. It really was my fault Sally's dead, and thought that made me cry even harder. Later that night, I couldn't sleep, so I walked over to my window, and I gasped. Outside my window stood a girl with curly brown hair and bright orange eyes. She stood there, staring up at me. As she smiled, I could see her, their white sharp teeth, sending shivers up my spine. Damn, that is spooky. I shut the window and ran to the bathroom and washed my face. I looked at the mirror and stared in horror as some other girl stared back at me. She had long but black hair that covered her left eye slightly. A smile was present on her lips giving me the chills. Her skin was so pale it was almost white. Her green eyes glowing bright and hungry. Can you describe eyes like that? You have hungry eyes? This couldn't be happening to me. I collapsed and grabbed my head in pain. Slowly I saw her feet and my head snapped to eight. Ugh. Gross! Each one different from the one next to it. The black haired one with the stitches on the side of her face looked down at me smiling. Shush now, little one, and close your eyes and listen to the dark lullaby. I woke up in the hospital. They said I'd been in a coma for half a year. <laughs> Damn it. it! Was a coma story? Was this all a dream? My mother had broken down when she walked it. When she walked it? Later, I was handed a package with my name on it, and it said, Lullaby for Death and Blood. I knew it was the eight girls. So, who were they? And how did they become what they are? I opened the box up and pulled an outfit out of black silk and a note written in red. Welcome to the Lullaby, Ashley. Meet us tonight? Okay, this story hurts my brain. And it's not even the, like, <laughs> the amazing twist that's mentally messing with you and it's going to become clear at the end. This is just, the writer just didn't know what they were doing. Probably, honestly, as a 15-year-old girl who spends a lot of time in a room that wrote this, I, I don't know what to think. As soon as I was out of the hospital, I took a shower and jumped out my window. You do a lot of things just cuz, right? You ran in your bare feet, you just jump out windows. What's next? You're just gonna light yourself on fire? I looked around for one of the girls. Long shadows appeared on the road, and I looked up at the eight girls smiling, walking closer to them in the outfit they gave me. The black haired one handed me a knife while grinning. Time to become a part of the lullaby. D does she willingly want to? I, I mean, I guess she does. I, I don't question it. Just keep reading. Somehow I knew what she meant. I had to kill everyone in my house. Duh. <laughs> what? I felt my heart stop and I walked home with a knife in hand. I slipped in my mother's room without waking her or dad and slit both of their throats open. Comma, killing them. No shit. I walked downstairs and leaned over Sally's mother. There was an awful rush inside me as I raised the knife. She woke up and screamed as I stabbed her in the throat. I grinned and walked up to my sister's room, swinging the bloody knife at my side slowly. Oh, swinging a bloody knife at my side as I slowly opened the door. Okay. She was hiding under the covers, shaking in fear. I laughed and jumped on the bed, making her scream. Okay. I smiled down at the crying six-year-old. What? Why? She cried, and I chuckled and looked at her and took the knife to her throat and leaned closer and whispered right before I ended her fear. Sha, little one. Why is it Sha? I don't know. I smiled and leaned closer, killing her. I used her blood to write on the wall. The shadows are here. I... I hate this community.